Well, amazing to see everybody here. Thank you very much for joining. Welcome to r and Q423 Demo Day. We're very proud to be able to show you today the fruits of three months of labor by the teams at Ventures supported by r and I know there's loads of people joining. Um, we're going to have a little bit of a preamble before, before they get going, but uh, try to uh, find a seat and we'll get going. So like all the activities at R&D, the ventures that we're gonna to feature today are all aimed at improving uh, human collaboration in a variety of interesting ways. So Demo Day is the opportunity to check in once a quarter on the cohort of ventures at R&D and see their progress. We have a packed agenda today. Um, we are going to take you through a quick presentation from uh, Daniel Espina, who's the instigator of r and We're going to take you through presentations from each of our ventures. And then as a special bonus, given that there was so much demand this time around, 160 odd and still counting registered enters and, and entries, per se, um, we thought a round of speed networking might be interesting. Who are all the people who are interested in collaboration technology? Do you want to meet who they are? Do you want to know who they are? Well, we've got a half an hour where you can stay on after the hours presentations where you can meet them. One-on-one -on -one sessions, very quick, rapid, five minutes. Um, hopefully you'll meet people you know. Maybe you'll meet some people you like. Maybe you'll meet both. Um, anyway, we want to move ahead and I'm going to uh, click through um, a short uh, presentation from Daniel, and hopefully uh, we can move ahead with that. Daniel, when you're ready. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so really, really excited to have you here. Uh, it's been long in the making to come to this point and really appreciate that you're all coming together as we help to catalyze the collaboration tech ecosystem. This is really, really important for us because um, personally, and also as a group, what's brought us together is this realization that we have a gigantic problem with human collaboration. Uh, next slide, please. The, the issue here is that we're talking about $8 trillion lost a year because people are miserable at work, because we don't care about the jobs that we're doing, because we prefer to look for the window, we're looking for the weekend to go and get drunk and numbed ourselves through another week of drudgery. I don't know if you've seen recently the, the video of the TikTok girl that was going viral in, well, TikTok, Twitter, et cetera. But the opinions were quite mixed of like, oh, yeah, Snowflake, you're just discovering work. But for many of us, is the sad reality that she's just realized how miserable the lives of the majority of workers worldwide, uh, worldwide are. And at the same time, we have these gigantic, like global, wicked, complex challenges that really require us to mobilize and address them. And we're wasting our lives with menial, pointless jobs. This is a coordination disaster. And naturally, the impact is also on our mental health. The, the good news is that a lot of the fundamentals are now changing. The, the, the very fabric, the very trends that allowed us to organize in an industrial society, next slide, please, are now being transformed. We have remote and hybrid work, the long tail of contribution with freelancing, gig economies, all of these, of course, all the web-free trends around autonomous teams, decentralized organizations that are also being reflected in Web2 and across other sectors, AI that comes to the picture to have tremendous impact, and all the new possibilities thanks to tokenized ownership and incentivization that we have here. This leads us to a radical change in the way we're organizing. Next one, please. And so as we've been looking at all the emerging change that's happening, for the way we're bringing that uh, together, uh, Chris, we're losing the slides. Chris? Yeah. No, the previous one, please. 
the, the way this is coming together is that we believe that the future is not just going alone because collaboration is painful and going the solopreneur route because that doesn't solve the mental health issues and is definitely not the way we have organized in the past in rigid corporations, top-down hierarchies and so on, but it's swarms and it's our ability to catalyze swarms and to find this way for networks of autonomous teams that are intrinsically motivated, that are capable of really coming together quickly to achieve things that alone they could not do and that way have both economies of scope and scale but as well the personalization and the autonomy the fast response fast innovation that allow teams allow and is in this coming that then we see a new form of organization that can take over and radically transform the way our economy and our society works next one please is that we start to see an unbundling of the traditional organization. What we had, as I was saying, this kind of hierarchy, everything nested within, and now we start to have way more network-like forms of contracting. And this changes the relationships that we have. And the more relationships that we have, the more complexity. But thanks to technology, thanks to the new capabilities that are coming, AI obviously plays a major role here, smart contracts as well. We can then manage the complexity of these relationships, which allows us to have more internal complexity without being burdened down by it. But instead of that, using it as an enabler that allows us to respond to the gigantic complexity of the outside world, to these complex, wicked challenges of global coordination, climate change, et cetera, et cetera, that we're talking about. Next one, please. So our mission here, what we're trying to do is to unlock the human potential by empowering these digital swarms. And Arendal facilitates these through a modular product ecosystem of swarm tech. So we're trying to bring together autonomous teams, different ventures that are tackling this problem, facilitate collaboration together, and facilitate us coming together as an ecosystem. Next, please. So we have a series of, of pillars you'll see around decentralized governance, legal and ownership. We actually just got a grant by SingularityNet to start tackling the legal and ownership problem. So we're super excited about that and looking to develop other partnerships and collaborate with other communities in this area. As well in community and culture, we'll be presenting about Together Crew. Uh, financial management is an area we don't have anything yet. Very excited to look for interesting ventures and possibilities. We potentially have uh, some presentations by that by pattern that might touch upon this. More to be announced very soon. And operations and talent as well, we start to have uh, with Meet with Wallet and some of the other tools as well. So. Without further ado, I'll pass it on to our different teams that will be showing their work. And thank you all for being here. So we're going to move swiftly on straight to our first venture, which is Together Crew and Katerina. Would you like to share your screen? And I'll stop the share. Yeah, thanks. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, I was looking at the part participants, and uh, it's great to see some people, um, known faces. Uh, host has disabled participant screen sharing. Can you please give me the, the, the right again to do this? Done. Thank you. So let me go on full screen. Um, and while I do that, as Daniel mentioned, we are working in the area of community and culture after having uh, experienced the problems in that area. So you should be able to see my screen perfectly right now. Um, so we are together crew and we unlock community powered business growth. So we are never sorry that was too fast. Over the years, the way companies have reached out to the users has changed. And we're now in an area of community powered growth. And while the word community has been shown around a lot, especially in Web3, the businesses who have real communities see a real impact on them. And this happens through different ways. For example, faster sales cycle, increased qualified leads, leads and increased retention rate. So investing in your community has a positive impact on your business. However, the problem is that Building a community, and everybody who is in his audience and is doing this can confirm, building a community is a lot of manual work. 
You have all these community members who have all these different questions, who don't read Notion or can't find the link or posting documents without ch checking for the sharing settings. And the community ma manager needs to keep on top of that. And then somebody is hosting an, an event about your DAO, but is using the governance documents from the last season and you have to correct for everything. To make this worse, every platform has their own data, but it's not sharing it with other data, with other platforms. So it's impossible for you as a community manager to get an idea of what is happening in your community because everything is siloed across different platforms. And we realized this, and then we went to other Web3 communities and we said, hey, we saw communities isn't, community is important and we're gonna look into this. And Everybody was like, yeah, for sure. We need to find ways to uh, measure what is a healthy community and we need to have strategies to maintain our communities healthy. So thanks to the grants that we got, we saw that this problem of knowing what is a healthy community is a problem that is widespread in Web3. Our solution to this problem is threefold. First, we're going to address the problem of data being siloed through cross-platform data analysis. So you're not just seeing insights about your community on Telegram and then on Discord, and then in some way have to kind of piece it all together. You get one dashboard where you see everything. Secondly, we're moving away from vanity metrics. So we're not measuring how noisy your community is, but we're measuring the number of conversations that are happening. And for this being able to predict how sticky your community is, and this leads you to better insight about the long-term viability of your community. And then finally, we realized that metrics are just the beginning. What is really important for community builders who are spending all this manual labor is to automate workflows and not just every workflow, but the workflow where human touch isn't so important. So behind the scenes, this is all happening thanks to our teams of data nerds. So we have PhDs in, in our teams and data engineers who just love to um, get a whole lot of unstructured data and put it in the right format. We're combining insights from different scientific disciplines to make sense of it. So we're not just measuring whatever we want to measure. We look at the science and measure what should be measured. On our dashboard or in our app, we have several features. Right now at the beginning, you see an analytics dashboard. And as mentioned before, it doesn't just measure noise, it measures conversation. So how many people are really interacting and adding value to all our team members? Then we're having a way for you to uh, diagnose your community in a more data-driven way. So helping community ma managers to move away from anecdotes and uh, using kind of real data to make decisions. And then finally, what we implemented this week is a um, customer support bot, so a LNM bot that you can ask questions. And in, in this way, it helps with the onboarding of team members. It's a way of automatically updating all the documents that exist about your community and and if once this is fully done, I don't have to go to Notion anymore, and I can just ask HiveMind what is happening. And I'm going to go a bit deeper into the the HiveMind bot. So normally, when you think about um, all these different chatbots that exist, you ask a prompt, and then you get an answer, and then you're like, hmm, okay, that's not really what I want. Then you ask another one, and then you get a different answer, and you're like, okay, this is getting there. And then you ask another question. And so 10 minutes have spent before you even got to the answer that you actually really need it. And that's because of the way people are taught to ask questions and kind of, it takes time to figure out the questions that you really want to ask. So what we have done is that we have realized this and we have simplified the process. You ask our HiveMind bot a question. It takes the question, generates sub-questions and then answers every sub-questions and then comes back to you um, with a response. Currently, our hive mind bot is at an intern level. So if you ask it too complex questions, it will not be able to do this. But if you can ask it simple questions. So we wanted to do a live demo, um, but the team has run into 
API limits with OpenAI. So um, just gonna give it a try. But I th I don't know if it will work. What I'm gonna show you instead are the queries we were doing before. For example, a question that our Together Crew team is currently um, strong. Well, not sorry. We are we're dealing with this. And we're onboarding a new designer. So then a question like this would be something that helps the new person to join. So what is the design team working on? And instead of having to have conversations with five different people to figure this out, the new person can ask HiveMind and get an answer. Uh, if we have somebody joining our dev team, we're using Neo4j, which is, a, which is a specific type of database. It's not the most widespread one, but it's the best for our use case. So again, you, you can just ask HiveMind for the answer. Another example I'm going to be showing you right now, and this one took a bit longer to answer. So you see interns aren't the best or the, aren't the quickest worker, but over time, our HiveMind will reach expert level. So a question you could ask is, why does the team want to use the post Postgres database? So again, this is a, uh, it's a database. It's a different, you have to weigh different um, factors about what database you want to use. And then um, a new person who joins the dev team can use HiveMind to figure out what was the decision-making team, what was the decision-making process in the team. So this is about HiveMind. It is currently installed in the Arndau server. It only has access to um, conversation that happened in the Together Crew channels. So everybody in this team who is part of Arndau uh, if you ask it questions that is not related to, to, to get a crew, it will not be able to give you an answer. Where are we right now with the general um, dashboard? So we have 10K as annual recurrent revenue, and we have 43 early adopters since I made these slides last week. Um, more, most importantly, the feedback that we get from those community managers is that we're really saving time for them. Like it's it's not just a fancy tool, it's something that makes their job easier. We are sitting, um, our solution is part of the 409 billion marketing tech market. And we were thinking about a traditional revenue model to capture this market. So uh, uh, Web3 com companies and DAOs will be able to pay for the in integrations that they need and we will be growing with them. In the community tooling landscape, you can see here it is pretty crowded. But what most people are doing is that or they help you create a community through ads. The problem with ads is that you need to keep on feeding them. So it's kind of like a fire that you have to um, that will that will get out if you stop putting wood in it. Another thing that is very common is just showing you a dashboard and you get fancy numbers, but you still need to make sense of it, and you still need to take action on it. We are different in that we are enabling communities to grow through organic growth, which is more sustainable. And we have automated workflows that are triggered by our metrics. Our And we are able to do this because we are a team of data nerds. Uh, we have PhDs in it. We have people who are very familiar with sens sensitive data. And we also have marketing and governance experts. And with this combination, we know the data side. But we also know that numbers are only meaningful if they are relevant for the context. So, And we have, team, we have members in the team that serve both areas. In the long term, where we're heading for is a data marketplace where we provide the infrastructure of integrating and structuring data and offering other teams the opportunities to build on that data. So we're doing the heavy lifting of cleaning data and providing it in such a format so that other companies can just, let's say, build a reputation me metric on it or an uh, on-chain identity based on the activity that you're doing or talent matching. So that's the vision we are working towards. And yeah, thanks for paying attention and um, it's time for questions. Okay, thank you very much, Katerina. I'm not seeing any questions in the chat. And as we're running a little bit 
later than we thought. I'm what I'm inclined to move ahead and ask Mehab Dad if he would mind uh, preparing to present us with pattern. Um, thank you very much, Mehab Dad. Thank you very much, Chris. I just heard my screen. Please let me know if you have mine. <laughs> There we go. Perfect. Okay, great. Thank you. So my name is Merdad. I'm the co-founder and tech lead of Pattern, or previously known as Microflow. We're going to get into it, why we call it Pattern later, but let's move ahead. Uh, this is our context, uh, context for this uh, session. We're going to go through the challenges DAOs face, Microflow version one, and what we learned from it, introducing Pattern to you, the solution we have future, and a teeny tiny demo. So beginning with the problems, currently in the DAO sphere and the, the decentralized autonomous organization ecosystem, we have a lot of issues. The first one is that this uh, industry isn't big enough that they have a specialized tool for them. And the DAOs have tried to integrate Web2 and Web3 solutions together in order to design their own suitable tool. And throughout that, uh, there has been some issues. For example, the data flow and Madad, have we lost your audio? Madad, I think we lost you for about 10 seconds. Um, perhaps you could just go back to the beginning of this slide. OK, uh, from the beginning of the slide, if I want to start again. That's uh, OK. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. We have different problems in the DAO communities and in the Web3 industry because uh, there, there isn't a specialized tool for DAOs because the community of DAOs isn't big enough that they have a special tools for themselves. And this has brought a lot of issues. For example, data connectivity has been an issue and DAOs has constantly uh, issue with on-chain and off-chain integration. They couldn't onboard their users. They had issues with setting up meetings. Also, they had an issue with uh, rewarding their contributors because they cannot view their activities properly. It's like you have a burger, but it's handed to you separately. You have the bread, the patty, the meat, and the onion and everything, and you are consuming it separately. So we came up with the idea of Microflow, the version one, and basically we put everything together. We implemented a way that you can integrate different tools by dragging and dropping them and connecting them together, easily creating workflows for yourself that will work for you and you don't need to maintain them. You implement them once and leave them. They can trigger on and off chain actions for you and they are going to create uh, several rewarding mechanisms for you. But uh, after we launched this product, we uh, encountered another issue. Throughout the numerous discussions we had with different DAOs, we figured out that uh, there are a lot of issues that DAOs don't even know how to solve or they don't Lost you again there, Medad. Don't even know what type of workflows they want to create. Want to create a burger, but still we don't have many now. That's better. But your also your screen is only showing a quarter of the uh, presentation at the moment. So you might want to just review that if you can. I think we. Okay. Let me share again. That's still just a quarter, just the top left hand court, left hand side. Might be the size I, of the I screen. Think I, I think I think I see the whole screen here though. Yeah, it's looking fine to me as well. Okay, fair enough. Great. Sorry. Carry on, please. Mark. Yeah. Uh and we provided them with workflows, but still there was the issue that uh, people didn't know how to bring order to their organization. 
What we came up with next was pattern, and that was our rebrand from Markerflow to patterns, where you, in our ecosystem, you can discover the pattern of your organization. What does pattern bring you is uh, the pattern will enable the DAOs to install or build a structure for themselves, or as we call it, a pattern. It allows you to create sub DAOs or sub guilds where you can uh, fully connect them to different tools and create roles that you can revoke or grant uh, automatically using Microflow. And uh, we support for different patterns such as charity, investment, development, or any other type of DAO that you might be or you might want to create. Uh, we strongly believe that patterns will be, we strongly believe that pattern will be the last piece of infrastructure needed organization. In use on daily basis, we put them together for Bridge for so you don't need to worry about how to maintain a VR leverage structure which allows those to build sub DAOs. Top DAO will be managed by different roles. You can create missions and enables. With that uh, uh, passive proposal every time for a recurrent payment, this enables you to bring agility to your team and not to have to create a proposal for each of your uh, activities. Uh, that was it. Thank you, everyone, for your attention. If you want to reach out to us, use our Twitter. It's Microflow still. And if you needed more information, this is my Discord handle. We can adjourn to questions. If there are any. Thanks, Mayor Dad. I think we had a little bit of difficulty with some of the audio there, but we managed to uh, move on. Does anybody have any questions? Let's see in the chat about the way that Pattern is connecting up uh, different DAO stack tools um, and rights to, to rights and permissions of people given in, in a given DAO. While we're just getting... Uh, sorry, can you repeat the I'm just asking if there are any questions about pattern. Meanwhile, Merdad, maybe you can tell us about some of the roadmap that you have coming up. What are the new features that you're looking to implement? Okay, the new features that we are looking to implement is creating sub DAOs that you can come into our ecosystem and create your own DAO, your own sub DAO, and create roles for people that you can assign to them or Dad, I'm sorry, your audio seems to be giving out. I think we need. Would you like me to jump in, Chris? Yeah, but that'd be great. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, okay, so regarding the upcoming features, uh, for MVP, we kept it simple. So by the MVP of pattern, you can create different sub DAOs uh, thanks to the Argon infrastructure. And these sub DAOs uh, can actually be managed by some roles which we are going to use hats in this regard. Um, for the MVP, we will only manage one permission at this moment and we will add more permission, which is as a guild leader, which is the top hat of sub DAO, you would be able to spend some amount of money without needing to spend proposal. Why we pick this scenario? So we identified that many DAOs struggle with the payments and the agility they want to have for their, I would say, routine and day-to-day -day task. 
And in this way, we are somehow reducing the DAO bureaucracy and bringing more agility. Essentially, that's the first feature we are working on, hopefully by the upcoming weeks and or worst case scenario, the Dev Connect, we would be ready to launch the product. Okay, uh, there is a question in the chat regarding hats. I think Daniel has managed to answer that, but do you want to speak to that, Sefa? Um, how is the management of the flows assigned? Can I add it or something to my members? Exactly. So as a role management system, we are going to use our, uh, I would say, favorite. This is my favorite protocol, hats. Um, so if you already created your hats tree in the hats UI, you can easily sub those and other entities. So it would be really easy for you to integrate the hats you currently have with our with our infrastructure. Okay, brilliant. All right, I think we're going to move on to our next presentation. Thank you very much, Meher Dad, and also Zephyr for stepping in. Thank that you. was that was Patton. Um, so we're going to move on uh, to meet with Wallet. Meet with Wallet uh, has been uh, a venture that we've been working and to support at uh, R and R for for almost since the beginning, really. Uh, so it's been a long time. Pasa, if you're there, uh, please do grab a grab your screen. Uh, make sure you're on a slideshow, and uh, looking forward to it. Yes, sir. Let me just. One sec. Sorry. Hi everyone, my name is Parsa. I'm the project manager on Meet with Wallet and I have the honor to introduce you to a new age of team coordination. Sorry, Parsa. Working with... Sorry, Parsa. Sorry to yes. interrupt. Can you just can you just push the slideshow button or we're just seeing your actual slides from the uh, without the slideshow at the moment? Hit the slideshow okay, button. Just... Let me just do it again. Are we on the slideshow now? No. Maybe you have two screens. Top right button slideshow. Uh, is it sharing now? No, we can see the original slide deck. So we're not going to play the video. So we, if you have two screens, maybe just make sure that we're seeing the one with this, uh, you're sharing the one with the slideshow. Um, just... Yeah, I am just sharing the one with the slideshow. Let me just change into Chrome. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Sorry for that. Uh, so from the beginning, uh, my name is Parsa. I'm the project manager on Meet with Wallet, and I have the honor to introduce you to a new age of team coordination. I've been working with Meet with Wallet for almost four months now, alongside a team of around 10 people who have been building this uh, product for almost a year now. As a team uh, working remotely, we are f very familiar with the pain of uh, setting up meetings, but this is particularly difficult uh, with today's rapidly evolving work culture. The future of work is global. Teams will be comprised of uh, contributors uh, from uh, different time zones. It'll be fluid. Uh, teams will be created to solve a, solve a challenge and then disband it quickly. Individuals within them need to be able to move freely from uh, one group to another. It will be flexible. Individuals may have different roles in uh, each uh, work group, and it will be decentralized. Workers will uh, want to keep their own personal data 
and may want greater control over their data privacy. So you can see how tools that uh, are currently um, used um, does not appeal to the natives of storm working error. Uh, Meet with Wallet is a decentralized meeting scheduling solution tailored to the needs of today's worker and their teams and communities. Although setting up a meeting suited to everyone's time is a recurring challenge, Meet with Wallet lets you easily share your calendar with the press of a button. It allows users to connect calendars from multiple providers so you aren't uh, stuck uh, using a tool you don't want to. Uh, you can use an anonymous wa wallet address so you don't have to disclose uh, any email identifier or any other kind of identifier if you don't want to. Your calendar link is yours. You can use it for any team, uh, even when you change projects or jobs. And it has smart bookings uh, built in to uh, make gro uh, group uh, collaborations much more easier. In short, Meet with Wallet takes the pain out of meetings. It lets you choose the time that works best for all participants. And it ends the annoying uh, back and forth emails or Discord messaging just to schedule a meeting. So let's have a quick demonstration of how it works. Let's say you want a one-on-one -on -one meeting with someone from your team. All you have to do is uh, put in their link, choose the date, choose the time, uh, and boom. Your meeting is scheduled. But it gets even, uh, sorry. But it gets even easier. You don't even have to leave Discord to set up your meeting. You can use the command for uh, the Meet with Wallet Discord bot add who you want to be in the meeting and set the duration of the meeting. And within less than 30 seconds, uh, the bot will automatically choose the nearest time that everyone is available and set the meeting for you. There it goes. Meet with Wallet is free for everyone. Uh, sorry. Right now we are working on customizing Meet with Wallet uh, even more for Swarm workers. We have just completed Lightning uh, uh, scheduling for creating uh, meetings instantly with Discord bot. Next, we're working on creating group calendars, uh, which includes creating a bespoke group of individuals which can be booked as a team or as an individual. Uh, so the book all uh, feature might be used when your team needs to be to pitch to a potential investor or a user. Uh, you're going to need your team leads, project managers, sales teams, and developers in the meeting. This feature will find the time best suitable for all the parties that's uh, going to be in the meeting. The book any feature might be used as an IT support group, each of whom can uh, provide a similar uh, support on a given product. Meet with Wallet is uh, free for everyone to try as a fully functional product. You can add your calendar, book one-on-one -on -one meetings, and share your calendar just for, by sharing your wallet address. However, to get the full benefits of decentralized working, you have to opt for a pro subscription. I hope you enjoyed a glimpse of what's possible with Meet with Wallet. And uh, if you're ready to level up your scheduling game, hit us up on Discord or Twitter. Thank you. Thank you very much, Parsa. Um, waiting for a question in the chat. I'm keen to understand from, I know that you've deployed with many DAOs, but but from I've the one I'm most familiar with is the way that you've used it in R and DAO. What can you can you talk to me a bit a little bit about how you've used or what difference it's made uh, when you've been working with a team based in Discord through R and DAO when you've used Meet with Meet with Wallet? Uh, so basically, uh, uh, when we wanted to create uh, our weekly meetings for our own team, we had a lot of hassle going back and forth, uh, fixing everyone's time on different uh, calendars. 
and it took forever to uh, get it rolling. Uh, but if we had uh, when we had the bot rolling out, uh, it was as simple as doing it in five seconds, which took us almost two weeks to do. You have to make sure that everybody has their diary up to date, though, right? That's the one. That's the one thing. Mm, yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so maybe we can move on ahead, and we'll uh, move ahead with our last venture for today, which is going to be uh, Harmonica. So thank you very much, Parsa, and meet with Wallet and uh, Artem, if you're ready. Uh, do you want to share your screen and we'll listen to uh, where you're at? Hello, everyone. Thank you, Chris. Uh, excited to be here. It's a great honor for me, and I'm a bit nervous because I see a lot of people who I know and some people who have influenced me in the participants list. So, yes, um, I'm going to share my screen now. Um, share. Here it is. Um, hopefully, oops, no, it's not full screen, is it? Yeah, that looks good. Uh, it's not full screen, though, no. Hide. Loading mutes, loading controls. Full screen. Should be better now. Right, so okay. I'm presenting Harmonica, which is the venture that we have been working on over the last few months. Uh, when I say we, uh, I mean a small team, uh, but very talented. Uh, <laughs> I'm not talking about myself, I'm talking about Harry, uh, who is my co-founder and uh, who uh, was my colleague uh, in the protein community. We both were in the core team of protein community until this year. Also, we have uh, a few very, um, well, <laughs> experienced people as advisors, including uh, Drea, Daniel, and Chris from Arendelle. I'm, I'm very, very uh, grateful for their help. Um, so while working in the protein community, both uh, me and Harry experienced the problem that I think a lot of us here has, you know, experienced a lot in the in the last few years, especially in Web three. But I, I think it's not only about Web three, really. It's about our civilization in general. I don't want to talk too much about meta crisis, um, but. Yeah, I think decision making can be much, much better than it is now. And when I talk about decision making, actually, I think about more specific, um, well, stages of that process, which is sense making and deliberation. So organizations don't do that as much as we wish they did. Uh, because on the one hand, it's not easy to engage people, especially when they work remotely. And according to some research, 60% of employees uh, these days report a decrease in engagement, and it's hard to scale uh, thoughtful deliberation this way. Uh, a lot of insights are missed. Many people avoid conflict, don't want to argue, say they, so they prefer not to you know, write comments on the forum or something like that. And on the other hand, discussing things takes a lot of time. Even if you manage to engage people, well, actually it turns out that they create a lot of noise and someone has to process all that. And, you know, it can happen asynchronously, uh, usually with text, it causes delays, especially if you're using different communication platforms, it can get really messy. Um, and it's difficult to follow what I call decision-making protocols, um, which can be really, really useful. So, 
another thing that I want to say is I think a lot of people here agree with me that artificial intelligence has a pivotal role to play in the future of both work and governance. So without further ado, I want to tell you a little bit about what we're building, uh, which is a uh, uh, language model powered chatbot that helps groups of people come to alignments really, really fast. So it's important that it's powered with large language model like GPT because it enables fast and scalable facilitation. And it's also important that it's a chatbot because using a chatbot enables us to meet people and communities there where they are, like Discord. And it's really easy to use and it ensures a high engagement. Uh, not only that, but we're also building a template of libraries based on popular frameworks uh, like retrospectives or sociocracy. Um, it can be anything, uh, but basically it enables us to expand our use case horizons with things like sense making, collaboration, strategy, investments, and so on. Uh, we're also building a web dashboard, which will turn simple conversations into action items and basically build a collective intelligence OS for your organization. So on the one hand, we are not only synthesize what people uh, think uh, or propose in the chatbot, but we also turn those um, ideas or you know uh, maybe tensions into actionable, items with certain metadata that you can actually do something with, like update your constitution or share announcement on Discord or something like that. And on the other hand, we can uh, build something like collective intelligence analytics for your organization uh, based on the history of deliberations or sense-making session. So at this point, I wanted to show you how it works. Um, Hopefully, we have a few minutes for that. And to do that, I'm going to uh, share another window. I'm sorry, I, I didn't record a long video, which I should have done. Um, so the problem is that, I hit, that I've hidden Zoom controls, so I can't switch the window anymore. Oh, my God. What? I don't know what to do, to be honest. It's... <laughs> How can I share another window now? Uh, if you unshare this one and then just share again from another yeah, window. I, the, the, those controls. Listen, guys, I, I have very limited time and okay. I'm, I'm afraid that I have to skip this. I'm sorry about this. Uh, I wanted to show you how the chatbot works in Discord. Uh, it really does, but I, I think I don't have time for this. Uh, very embarrassing. Um, anyway, so the business model uh, for this currently this is our uh, quite simple. Uh, maybe it will change uh, after we start the actual sales. But basically, we want to offer free uh, features to everyone um, so that anyone could use it and. Also, it will the, the code will be shared on GitHub. So if you want to host it yourself, you can do it. Um, and uh, also, we can offer professional features um, for $100 a month or maybe 1000 per year, which would make it unlimited sessions per week, unlimited participants in one session. Uh, like premium templates and integrations. And on top of that, we also want to build enterprise uh, tier for larger organizations, that which could include um, uh, asynchronous uh, sense-making, something that we call harmonic controls. Uh, Daniel, I can see your messages and wait, maybe we can try to do the demo uh, after I finish with my slides. Thank you. Um, so this is the roadmap. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but basically we are building a full stack collective intelligence infrastructure. And there is like four important parts of this, uh, primarily 
what we're doing with language models, what we're doing with the UX, and how we facilitate sessions and also DevOps for this. Um, and one idea that I want to try to uh, convey is that Harmonica is both multiplayer and a protocol. And when I say that Harmonica is a protocol, well, actually, I mean that Harmonica enables to deploy different protocols or collective intelligence protocols in your organization uh, so that you just you don't just generate text or mirror board with your team. Because basically with that content, you still have to process it to turn it into actionable items. With Harmonica, you don't need to process anything. It's, you just uh, generate actionable items with your team in real time. And I think that's uh, what really makes different from both, you know, uh, forums and Miro, and even uh, tools like Polis or Remesh, uh, which you might uh, have used. So one more thing, uh, I have uh, applied for my first Gitcoin grant today. Um, it's still uh, in review. Uh, I'm, I've applied to uh, the new round called uh, by Open Civics, um, and yeah, if you uh, can support us on Gitcoin, I would really appreciate that. Also, we are looking for the pre-seed round, and I would be happy to discuss it with you um, later on. Uh, thank you so, uh, very much. If I have some time left, I will be happy to try to change, switch to the wind to the Discord window and uh, run the demo for you. Let's try it out. We've got two minutes left of this, and we've got a little bit of time left for an outro, but we can just squeeze the outro. So let's, I'd love to see this working you live. Can you can me of the shortcut with, for Zoom to unhide the control. Zoom controls unhide. I think there's the odd options. The options at the top might have exit full screen mode. Yeah, I'm getting a recommendation of try escape or why don't you access Discord via the web app, uh, like via your browser? Zoom, uh, I zoom control shortcut. Okay, so Alt. <laughs> oh my god Alt. don't worry what? why is it so hidden don't worry Artem I think we'll come back we'll, we'll come yeah. back and do that at a different time yes I think so because oh my god I don't know if I can do it. any questions guys Yeah, try oh, something happened and now I can share my this window with you. Yeah, I follow uh, Hen Hendrik's suggestion. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry, Spencer's suggestion. Thank you very much for the save there. Yes, thank you, Spencer. Okay, cool. So you can see the, my Discord window, right? Yes. Yeah. Please, I, I I can't hear yes. you. Yes, yes, we can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hopefully, there's some people here. And I'm just typing ask. Uh, and now, what? Okay, sorry. Ask. What's your favorite adventure? So, this is how the session starts. And now everyone can join it. Join button, and immediately the chat box uh, starts. Um, yes, thank you so much, guys, for joining the session. Really appreciate it. Uh, so now I'm going to talk to the bot, and everyone else is going to talk to the bot using 
any number of messages, any language. It doesn't have to be English because GPT can translate any language, can understand any language. Um, so I'm really excited about the new venture that is currently being um, proposed. So if you haven't voted yet, please go to Proposals channel to support the new venture called SchoolDAO. Um, Right, so we already have a few potential consensus positions, which is hold out a pattern to get a crew harmonica and microflow. Thank you very much for mentioning harmonica here. Um, basically, yeah, the bot is listening to everyone, and if there is any overlaps or potential consensus points, it tries to merge those uh, statements, and also generates the questions that would help us uh, find common ground quickly. Currently, it's sharing the same summary with everyone, but in the near future, it will have separate dialogues with each participant, so you will get your personal questions, and you will have your own dialogue with the chatbot, which will um, enable us to make it more if, if effective and also cross-pollinate ideas so that the bot could ask everyone about others' ideas, other participants' ideas. Um, but basically, this is how it works. Uh, it's really, really fast. And uh, we also are going to use different templates. So uh, you will be able to use it in different contexts. It can be, yeah, like I said, it can be about retrospective. It can be theory of change. It can be SWOT analysis, basically anything. And yeah, it will help you use good enough uh, collective intelligence protocols. Thank you very much. Okay. That brings us to the end of our uh, venture presentations. So um, if you haven't already, we really invite you to join r and The Discord link is available from the brand new website, which is available at rndow.info. Um, so if you have a venture idea or you want to join a venture or you simply want to build along with R&DAO, please get in touch with us.